Hey there, guys, and welcome to another episode of Ocarina of Time Randomizer. And we are here in this room full of rocks. I did check the spoiler log and found out that there is one useful item that is in the far left chest. Well, of course, in order for us to get that, normally, we need to use the McGannon Hammer. But I have something better. I can just move these blocks. In fact, I think that this seed is set to where you you cannot get the McGannon Hammer without first getting the item that I am expecting to find in this chest right here. I'm quite certain I hadn't gotten this chest. And look at that. We hadn't. And we have at last learned the Song of Storms. This is going to help us out quite a lot. Because that means that we can now go into the bottom of the well. And I'm going to be uh, actually doing that uh, right now. So here we are in the windmill and we are going to... Play the Song of Storms to mess the windmill up. You know, I wonder why Link always returns to that exact same spot. And I also wonder why the guy who is in the windmill does not get mad at Link like straight away like he's mad in the future but he doesn't get mad when well after you have drained the water I just needed to equip the Hylian shield because as this is the bottom of the well there are some fire bats I think that for quite a long time I was super confused about this spot and like I would just come down there and come across that wall and I would have no idea on what to do next because I did not know that you could even go through that wall. At least not until one day in which I just randomly went through it. And by that, I think I just found out one day that you could go through it. Like, maybe I was just playing around a bit and figuring that out. Although we don't need the Lens of Truth all that much because I played through this game quite a lot of times. So I pretty much know where everything is at this point. Alright, we got that spider out of the way, and this here is a red rupee that I cannot even hold. What a ripoff. And I'm pretty sure that what is in there is just a gold sculptula, which is not even worth my time, so I'm not going to. Alright, and in here we got a deck of nut. Well, time for us to drain the water. It is quite extraordinary how there is that platform where you need to play Zelda's Lullaby. It is almost as if somebody was expecting uh, someone to come down here and play Zelda's Lullaby. Because I think there are a lot of places in the Land of Hyrule that people would not even think to come down. There's another chest. Hopefully this is something that is very useful. It's... the map. Well, not what I was hoping for, but I'll take it. I think that this area right here is pretty much a jackpot of sorts. Oh boy, the mirror shield! Well, that will come in handy for whenever we will need it.
All right, and I am now going to do the trick on how to... You know, I really hate how, even when he is in the animation, it, it, the Redead is still able to freeze him. I really don't get that. And, of course, we have this cutscene where all of those coffins play at once. Or open up at once. Not really, uh, play at once. Hopefully that Gibdo does not get me. Oh, I didn't get those other chests. Miss well see what come on. That was kind of an a, a funny sounding fanfare. Alright, there's nothing in that chest. Yeah, this is the reason why I needed to get the Hylian shield out, and not the Deku shield. Because the Deku shield will burn if it catches on fire. It's quite funny how there is no point in the Deku tree, the first dungeon of the game, where you could have the shield be burnt. I mean, there are torches inside of the Deku tree, but there aren't any places where you could get the shield burnt. Okay, I was checking because I couldn't remember if we got the Lens of Truth or not. I'm not sure if we're going to find it in this dungeon. You normally find the Lens of Truth in this dungeon, but this is the randomizer, which means that that item could be found anywhere. I mean, I would not think that it would be found in the bottom of the well. Because the chances of an item being found... In the usual dungeon, where it's supposed to be found, is pretty much very low. Alright, and I... Yep, I had guessed wrong. I guessed wrong. I thought this was supposed to be the pit where that chest was. But it wasn't. Oh, it kind of lagged for me. Again. I mean, I could, I probably could have uh, checked the spoiler log to see where the Lens of Truth was going to be found in the seed, but I didn't think to do that. The only reason why I checked the spoiler log to see where the Song of Storms was, was because I needed to know where the McGannon Hammer was, and as it just so happens, the McGannon Hammer is somewhere that requires us to have the Song of Storms. I'm not going to say what it is for, but... Whatever we do, where the the place where the McGannon Hammer is uh, requires us to play the song of storms, and I needed to go to that chest in Goron City to get the song of storms, which is kind of funny because it is located somewhere where you normally would need to get the McGannon Hammer, since. In the regular game, you don't get the Silver Gauntlets until very late into the game. In fact, you get it in the Spirit Temple, which is the last dungeon of the game. So I guess Nintendo was not expecting you to uh, have any means of getting that chest uh, before getting the McGavin Hammer. And normally you would not by that point. Okay, I already opened up that chest. So I guess we're going to fight Dead Hand without the Lens of Truth. Although there is another chest that is found in the room with Dead Hand. So, we will at least have two checks. Okay, I'm going to see if I can get that chest. Yep, all the way over here. Which was just a recovery heart. I kind of wish I had waited to get that after. Yeah, I think uh, the Deku sticks deal more damage. Yeah, this is pretty much how I've done it in the past. 
Or, or at least my first couple of playthroughs. Although I did not know that it was actually possible to get out of the hand without waiting for the dead hand to come over anyway. Although, the... The aggravating bit about beating Dead Hand this way is that you never know where Dead Hand is going to appear at because there have been some cases which which I would go up to one of those hands and Dead Hand would come out right next to me like some place where by the time I have a chance to escape it's too late for me to get away without getting bitten because he will just be right there just pretty much ready to bite me right before I have even a single second of time to get out. Okay, so is this going to be the lens of truth? Normally it would be, but for the randomizer, you never know. It's another key. Yeah, I think that there is only one chest left in this entire dungeon. I'm pretty sure that the keys just lead to rooms with gold skull tulas, but we don't need any more of the gold skull tulas because we've already gotten all of the prizes for the gold skull tulas. I mean, if I was doing a seed where the gold skull tula tokens are also mixed into the randomizer, we pretty much would keep on searching for gold skull tulas even past this point. Now, I, I'm going to go ahead and do something that probably... Oh, wait, there's, there's another chest in here. I forgot about that chest. Wow, actually killed him. Alright, and then this chest is... A Hylian Shield. I really don't believe that. And I also don't understand why you can get a Hylian Shield as a randomized item, even when you already have one. How come the game does not check if you already have it? I think that there is going to be a, a sort of update if it hasn't happened already. Oh, are you kidding me? Okay, now my shield is gone. If I had come in here and the shield was like totally gone, then if I hadn't gotten that chest before, then this would have been a good time for me to go back for it. Alright, so we've gotten all of the... All of the items that the bottom of the well is going to give to us. And now here we are in Lake Hylia. And the reason for that is now I am going to go to the Frog Choir. And I think the quickest way to get there is through Zora Domain. So I'm going to be doing that real quickly. I probably will go ahead and speed through this. And there's that big rupee, which has been there for as long as I can remember. But we cannot pick that up until we've gotten the, the adult's wallet. I can't believe that we're 15 episodes into this series and we haven't even found one wallet upgrade. It's just unbelievable that we're this far into the series and we have not found that yet. I mean, this game is giving me plenty of rupees to pick up, but it is not giving me the one item that I am really wanting. Well, maybe not the one item, but an item that would be very useful, but they just are not giving it to me. And I have no idea where the 
adult's wallet is gonna be, and I'm not gonna bother checking the spoiler log unless I really need to, and last time I checked, I didn't need to. I bet you can... I bet you guys can guess what item this is gonna be, because I did mention that we were going to need to have the Song of Storms to get the Iron Boots. And now we have them. So now that means we can go into the Water Temple. And I will meet you guys there. So here we are at Lake Hylia. It's like for me, Lake Hylia. Oh wait, I already opened this. And in case you are wondering, I am already wearing the Zora tunic. The Water Temple is a lot more bearable when I can actually equip the Iron Boots just by pressing a button. Which was not the case in the original game. I'm pretty sure I hadn't gone in here already. Oh, would you look at that? I hadn't. Or had I? Pretty sure I hadn't. All right, we've gotten those spike things killed, and now we have another chest for us to open up. Which is just a key. It does make me wonder how this torch could have ignited after being underwater for so long. I mean, is there some sort of a feature inside of that uh, torch where uh, it will light on fire when it is not wet? I wonder what kind of torch can even do that. And, especially with how it is able to dry up pretty quickly. You know, where it will only uh, light up when it is not underwater. Although, it would be surreal if there was a, a torch that was lit underwater. <laughs> of course, I, I can think of that happening in a, in a cartoon. Most in particular, SpongeBob SquarePants, where there are a lot of episodes. A lot of scenes where there is a campfire, although there is only one episode that questions how they can have a, a fire if they are underwater, and that was in the episode uh, Life of Crime, where Spongebob and Patrick think that they had stolen a balloon, and they are uh, sitting at a fire. And Patrick says, Hey, if we're underwater, how can there be a... And then the fire just goes out. It's kind of like the fire is like, Oh, he's right! I can't exist underwater! And so it just goes out. May as well grab it anyway. I bet you guys are thinking, Why did I go this way? I kind of forgot that there is nothing to get here except that Gold Skull Tula. Oh well. You know, even with the iron boots that are easy to take on and off just by pressing a button, this dungeon is still going to be quite a challenge for me. Or it's still going to take me quite a long time. Not sure if I will be able to get the entire thing done within this single episode. But we'll have to see. Although I happen to be quite impressed with the views. Uh, like, right before I started the recording of this episode, uh, episode 14 had 99 views on it. But... There's also that case where the views just will drop down. Uh, and, and I think I've talked about that before. 
where the views just drop down unexpectedly. Well, maybe not... Well, yeah, I suppose it is unexpectedly, but... You know, I did discuss about why views on YouTube would drop, and that would be if YouTube thinks that a view on a video should not count. Like, if the person has only been watching the video for, like, a few seconds, and they don't think that that's really worth having it count. Although I barely checked out that video myself. So there probably are quite a lot of people who are checking out that uh, video. I do wonder, if a video loses views, does that kind of affect the algorithm in any way? Like, if a video, like, goes to, like, 100 views, but then it drops down to, like, let's say, 50, do, does that make it so that YouTube will say, oh, well, I guess they're, this video is not worth recommending to a lot of people? I mean, I'm not sure if that is the case. I mean, I certainly hope that it's not, but... I'm just wondering, because... You know, I, I do know... Or I think I have an idea on how the algorithm works. Alright, let's see what is down below. Oh, come on. Alright. Please don't land on the spikes. Don't land on the spikes. I knew you were gonna land on the spikes, even though I told you not to. Alright, sinking down. Sinking down. I've got the sinking feeling. Pun totally intended. You know, I really cannot believe that you can only use the hookshot when you are underwater. I mean, why can't you use the sword underwater? I mean, is it not possible to swing swords underwater? I mean, if you can use the hookshot underwater, why can't you use the bow underwater? Or why can't you use... Um, I can't think of another example, but... I was gonna say, why can't you use bombs, but then I realized, well, well, bombs uh, technically will be put out if they are underwater, because they technically are fire. Well, I certainly found a couple of keys. Pretty much vanilla items so far. Now, I'm sure that anybody who has been watching this Let's Play, or the Let's Plays I did on my other channel for video games, has probably wondered, how come I don't use the tracker, or a tracker, whenever I'm doing an Ocarina of Time randomizer playthrough? And the reason for that is because I have not figured out how to get these trackers to work. Exactly. I think one time I actually tried to make my own tracker, but that did not work so well. But I am hoping that when I do a second playthrough of this game on my main channel, that I hopefully will get a tracker set up. I guess it will just all depend on how well my Let's Play does when working on a randomizer. Oop. Well, at least I have the boss key for when it comes time to do that, which I guess technically we can do that right now, but I don't want to do it until we have cleared through the entire water temple. So, not really going to do that yet. Alright, so I've been recording for about over 30 minutes, a little over. It, it probably is going to be a lot less when I edit because there were those long pause screens and those 
points in which I was traveling, which I'm likely going to be cutting out, which will pretty much cut down on time. Hold on, I don't want to do this yet. I'm going to go back through this door, because there's also another area that I need to go to before we do that. Although, can I actually summon the Scarecrow here? No, I can't. Bummer. Alright, so here's the room. The Monster Teeth room. Yeah, because these, these pointy things look like Monster Teeth. Oh, okay, I barely got that. For another key! For another key! Ugh. Oh, I just realized I actually activated that switch without getting onto the water first. Oh no! Ugh, darn it. Now I have to wait for it to stop before I can activate it again. I was trying to get off to safety, but something wouldn't let me. Let's try this again. Alright, there we go. Made it to safety. And there's the Scarecrow. All right, we are now raising the water. Raising it back to pretty much the main level. All right, I think that I'm gonna call it an episode right here. So uh, thank you so much for watching and I will see you again next time.